Once upon a time in the middle of winter, a queen sat stitching by a window with an ebony frame. While she was sewing, she looked out at the snow and accidentally pricked her finger with the needle. A drop of blood fell on the snow. Oh, if only I had a child whose skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as my window frame. Not long after that, she gave birth to a, little, to a beautiful little girl who had skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony. She called her Snow White. The queen died and the king soon married another wife who became queen. This queen was very beautiful and also very vain. She couldn't bear the thought that anyone might be more beautiful than her. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The mirror would always answer, you are queen. This made the queen happy because she knew that the mirror always spoke the truth. Snow White was growing up and each day she became more beautiful. One day the queen went to a mirror again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? When the queen heard these words, she was upset. Child, I shall not rest until she is dead. One day she summoned a huntsman. Take the, take the child out into the forest. I do not want to see her ever again. Bring me back her heart to prove she is dead. Yes, you have. The huntsman obeyed and took the girl out into the forest. Just as he took out his hunting knife, she began to weep. Oh dear, huntsman, have mercy. I promise I'll run into the forest and I'll never come back again. The poor sweet child, go run off then. Snow White ran as fast as she could. The huntsman was relieved not to have to kill the girl. Just when he was wondering what he'll do, a wild boar ran past. The huntsman killed the boar and took the heart to the queen. Thank you, you have served me well. Meanwhile, poor Snow White was lost and afraid. At nightfall, she discovered a little cottage and went inside to rest. Everything in the house was extremely tiny and tidy. Against the wall there were seven little beds in a row. Snow White was so hungry and thirsty that she ate a few vegetables and a tiny bit of bread from each plate and some water from every cup. Then she curled up on one of the beds and fell fast asleep. Not long after the owners of the cottage returned, there were seven tiny little dwarves who spent their days in the mountain digging for ore and minerals. Who's been sitting in my little chair? Who's been eating from my little plate? Who's been eating all my little vegetables? Who ate my bread? Who's been using my little fork? Who's been using my little knife? Who's been drinking from my little cup? Who's been sleeping in my bed? She looks tired. Let's let her sleep. In the morning, Snow White woke up feeling scared. Don't be afraid. What's your name? Snow White. How'd you get into our house? Snow White told them the story of how her stepmother had tried to kill her and how the huntsman had saved her life. If you clean for us and clean our house, you can stay. Yes, we'll give you everything you need. Oh, with pleasure. And so it was that Snow White came to live with the dwarves. Every morning they would go up to the mountain and every evening they would, they would return and dinner was ready for them. The dwarves taught her how to stay safe. Meanwhile the queen had finished eating her dinner and went back to her magic yard. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the first of them all? You are here, dear queen, the little snow. Why in her hideaway the sound the wolves is the fairest I've seen. What well, I've been deceived. Snow White is still alive. The Queen knew 
that as long as Snow White was alive, she would not be able to be, feel anything but jealousy. She came up with a plan. The queen retreated into a secret chamber where no one ever set foot and made an apple full of poison. It's beautiful, but one bite and you must die. Once again, she disguised herself and went beyond the seven hills to the home of the seven dwarves. Apples for sale! I'm not supposed to take anything, the dwarves wouldn't allow it. I'll give you one. I'm not supposed to take anything. Are you afraid it's poisoned? I'm just a little old lady, I won't do that. Well, it does look delicious. Thanks. No sooner that the Snow White had taken one bite of the apple, then she fell dead, down dead. This time the dwarf won't bring you back to life. At home she went straight to a mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the first of them all? You are queen. Ah, oh, my heart is finally at peace. When the dwarves came home that night, they found Snow White's body. We can't bury her, they said. Let's make her a glass coffin and put her at the top of the mountain. Snow White lay in the coffin for a long, long time. One, one day, the son of the king was travelling through the forest when he spied the coffin on top of the mountain. The dwarves were gathered all around. It was Sunday. What have we here? Dear precious Snow White, she's too beautiful to lay in the ground. You must let me have the coffin. I'll give you whatever you want for it. We, we won't sell all the gold in the world. Then make me a gift of it. For I cannot be able to live without seeing my beloved Snow White. The dwarves took pity on the poor prince and they gave him the coffin. He ordered his, he ordered his servants to put the coffin on their shoulders and carry it away. The coffin slipped and bumped on the ground. The drop freed the poisonous piece of apple that was lodged in Snow White's throat. Oh, good heavens, where am I? You were poisoned by the wicked, the wicked queen and we thought you were dead. You must come home with me. But I must look after the dwarves. Oh no, we'll be fine. You go with the prince. You deserve happiness. Snow White loved the prince too. She back with him to his father's castle and they got married and lived happily ever after. And every, everybody had a massive celebration. <laughs> <laughs> then they went out.